Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with Kev Marriott from Forgotten Parks. Today we're going to talk about all about how do we design our first Power Wrap application from a conceptual side and a data storage side. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So today I'm here with Kev Marriott. Kev, thanks for thanks for joining me today. And uh, Kev is with a, an organization called Forgotten Parks. Tell us a little about what Forgotten Parks does. So the Forgotten Parks Foundation is a uh, conservation nonprofit. We manage two national parks in the Democratic Re Republic of Congo. Um, the two parks make up a collective area of 26,000 square kilometers. So it's a huge protected area to uh, to manage. Um, I, I can't fathom how you must manage this. So it, it, it's, it, what, is, what are you looking for especially? What do you, when you revitalize the park, what kind of stuff are you trying to do here? So it's, it's a huge challenge and it's almost like we're starting from scratch. So um, everything has to be done from, from, from the beginning. We have to break everything down. And what, what the benefits of doing that is that we are able to learn from others and how they've implemented um, some of their uh, protocols and we're able to do that ourselves from the very beginning and also implement in um, new technologies to be able to assist us with our um, with our efforts and our mission to uh, rehabilitate those two national parks. Very cool. So one of the technologies you're looking at implementing now and use this app to kind of assist with are using these cameras right here. Tell us what these, these guys are going to do for you. Yeah, so these are these are um, trail cameras. Um, we use these types of cameras for um, wildlife monitoring. So we've only been managing the parks for two years. Um, prior to that, the the parks were um, devastated from years of civil war, um, poaching, um, and other kind of environmental pressures. So um, the cameras are going to be used for mainly to conduct research, so that we can get an idea of the state of the park and the numbers of wildlife within the park. Gotcha. So you're hoping to install hundreds of these, hopefully, all around the park and strapped to trees and dozens of them at least, and you want an inventory system to kind of track which ones have been deployed, what do I have in inventory, uh, what do I hope to deploy, what, is, what are the location of these are, that type of information? Yeah, um, and the, we're also hoping that the application will make it easier for the installers to be able to um, not miss steps and um, document the installation process, you know, or, uh, automatically, so that um, they can imp they can be empowered to work with technology that they haven't necessarily used before. Gotcha, gotcha. So the types of questions you're basically going to interview the installer to find out, hey, you have you done a walk by? Have you make sure this camera will actually turn on when you walk by it. Is it, 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 it taking pictures? Those kind of those, those kind of things you're hoping to ask them, kind of guide them through to make sure they consistently install these cameras? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. So it sounds like, let's kind of design it roughly here. I'll, I'll get rid of our mugs here so we can kind of see uh, a whiteboard here. And let's kind of design what we think this app might do. I, now we talked earlier to kind of get a general guideline of what we think we want to do. So I'm going to use our little whiteboard here to kind of picture what this inventory system might look like. And what I'm thinking we'll use is we'll use maybe a phone application since everybody will have cell phones that are the park rangers, it sounds like. Are they volunteers that will be deploying these? Um, it'll be a combination of um, a team of park rangers will be amongst the installation team. It can be um, researchers, um, some volunteers, um, other conservationists. Gotcha. Um, you know, we're, we're looking to try and to use the app as a as a guide to be able to assist the installer. Okay. So the the app definitely phone presence though everyone will have over a tablet or a PC or a Mac or those kind of things I imagine, right? Yeah. And also it's important this app be available to be offline since you're in the middle of, of Lord knows where in, in, yeah. uh, in Congo. So uh, so those are just some big key elements we have to work on in this application. So so guys, uh, those in, those in, uh, are watching this video, we're going to build Kevin's app, uh, Kev's app, excuse me, uh, over the next few videos from the ground up. And then uh, so we'll work on offline capabilities, work on connecting to things like uh, our data source, and kind of walk, so you can kind of see the evolution of this, of this application uh, from the ground up and from conception right now to actually a complete project. And this is kind of how we work at Pragmatic Works about building these kind of applications. Uh, but let's kind of whiteboard it uh, together now to see how it looks. So 
I'm imagining when you first open this application, what types of things do you think you'd want to see in the app? Uh, maybe an inventory of the types of uh, cameras you have? Yeah, so an inventory list and um, kind of status of, of that inventory as a, as a, uh, a snapshot view as you know. Okay, so we'll have an inventory and what, so what, what would you show here? Like a status of each camera? Like is it deployed, is it not? Uh, some of the columns we'll pick here at least. Uh, status, um, what else would you want to show in that, in that grid of, of data that shows um, what the, where is it deployed to? But not, be, it's more like lat long. It's not, these, aren't, these aren't deployed to certain cities or neighborhoods or, or uh, cross street. It's, these are in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, so, so it would be positions, locations. Um, oh, okay. Also, to be a project, because you mentioned there's uh, uh, different projects you're doing, like an elephant project. Yeah, uh, so it could be a research project. It could be um, you know some security aligned project. So you know to do with identifying you know poachers and things like that. As okay. They, um, as they come into the park. So this would say like deployed, and it would say elephant or poacher watch or some kind of research name. Yeah. Um, maybe next inspection date would be useful. Yeah. Uh, and I apologize, it's going to be rough. We're just kind of doing this to roughly uh, sketch this out. Uh, next inspection date. Anything else you'd want to show in this grid that might be useful from a high level to see where these cameras are at? Uh, you mentioned uh, we could put lat long on here also, but that, would that be useful or is that just extra data that is not not really functional for you? Um, as, a, as a snapshot, I think that would be uh, something that would be um, pulled in from, you know, it would, the details. Work, it would work with some other, yeah, in, in detail when you look at the camera to see where it is on the map. Okay. So maybe when I click on a camera, then I go to the lat long, get all the details <coughs> at that point, the picture of the camera and all that. Or the yeah. Game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we have, we also mentioned uh, before to me during lunch that uh, there's regular inspections of these cameras. So maybe we do a list down here. It needs to be galleries and inside of Power Apps. And we can do something like here called uh, maybe overdue for maintenance or uh, inspection. Yeah. So we can call it. And then just a, it's the same list just down there of hey this, these these are the these these poacher cameras have not been inspected in in a year and a half something like that, all right. And then we wanted some to find, to find make it at, at the make it super simple for your users to navigate this. We I think we said there's a few drop down boxes we we might have here also like just show me the the cameras that are available for me to deploy for example. So we yeah. have a little status drop down box. Oh there we go. And then uh, maybe ones for certain pro that have been allocated for certain projects. Yeah. All right. So again, this is not the prettiest graphic in the world, but it's going to do just fine for what we're doing. So those be two pull down lists. Um, what else do we? Yeah, we want. Should I be able to do something on this list if I click on it? What would you want to happen when I click on a, a camera here? Um. So if I click on one of the arrows, do it? Do I go to camera details at that point? If I click on a camera, uh, yeah, it'd be good if we, it would open up into uh, and give you a view of that camera. So, okay. um, give you more details as to you know, how the camera, where the camera was installed, how it was installed. Maybe a picture of it also of, of, yeah. it, of its installation and all that, so you can go find it. Maybe a map even mm -hmm. of where 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 the lat long is at on yeah, that, that location. Would, yeah, that would be great. Okay, so that'll be that'll be screen one. Uh, we also want to be able to now, so we, well, screen two, we talked about with the, all the details of the camera installation. Um, so, so far, what I've heard you say is we're going to need a few different tables or some places to store this data. Uh, so, we'll, let's go ahead and put, um, you know, data storage here. Uh, we'll have a project list of projects. So, poachers, poacher watch, elephant watch, whatever it might be. We mentioned uh, we'll have a list of camera types. Uh, I'm running out of room there, but you get the idea. And we'll have a list of inventory also. So cameras that are in inventory, what type of camera it is, and what project is that inventory item being used for. So those are the kind of the, the, the three areas we're going to create uh, for that. Yeah. Uh, and also store pictures on, of those, those locations of also um, the actual installation. So this is one screen. Now we mentioned uh, we'll have a detail screen. Well, that's that's fine. We'll just we'll just put we'll just dump all the data maybe with the map. Uh, what other ways we need to actually install the camera? So, what would you want the actual installation to look like of that? So, we're building an app for that. There we go. Uh, let's figure out how we want. Uh, how will we? We. I, I'm now an installer. I'm going to check this data out. Pull this data locally on my phone so I can be offline for a per period of time. 
what I want the, how am I gonna find the camera? I imagine it's probably a drop down box of some sort again. And maybe like have, uh, let's see if you're okay with this. Maybe have a, a project list, just kind of narrow it down. So I'm looking for, I'm working on this project right now. I then can see a list of all the cameras. Uh, so maybe you said, how, how many cameras would a, would a project have typically? Is it more than hundreds or is it need maybe dozens or a single digit number? Yeah, it's typically um, between 10 and 40 genuinely, but um, it could be anything up to 100 okay. normally. And am I searching by serial number? Or how is this going to work? How, how would I find that camera? Um, depending on how the um, how we account for those in inventory, we may give them uh, our own unique number. Okay. Um, we may use the manufacturer's serial number. Okay. Um, yeah. However, however we um, label the cameras, there will even be um, you know um, engraved onto the side number, Got it. numbers one to forty, for instance, and then we just use that rather than the manufacturer's serial number. Um, we just we'd have to work that out. Okay, on. no problem. So we'll put some kind of artificial number on that camera. Yeah, that you guys assign on top, and maybe put in parentheses here the serial number on top of that. So once we do that, maybe we pull a. Once I do that, I can pull um, all the information, the pictures of the, of the of the of the camera. So we'll just put a little picture here, picture here, and so on. So maybe the what it looks like in the box, kind of the the, the on the table kind of view, and then maybe the view if it is installed right here. Um, and then from there, we would basically go ahead and try to deploy this. So we'd have like a deploy button or something like that that we would try to do, or uh, what would you want to call that? Um, we, we, we forget what you named, we named that. Uh, yeah, deploys. I think deploys Or use correct. or something like that, and, uh, yeah. yeah, utilize or whatever. Okay, and that will change, of course, a dozen times between now and then. Okay. So once you click on that, we'll actually go to a pre-filled out kind of form. Now this will be the inspection form. Now you mentioned before you want to put, uh, we want to prepare for the the worst case scenario, right? So we'd have like a um, a lat long here, but we have to assume we'll use the the phone's option there to actually see that. So we'll put a lat long here. Do you care about altitude also, or does that matter? I think it's a, a nice to have okay. um, to be able to in, input that and. Okay. As, as flexible as we could make it, really, and then it's up to the installer whether he, you know, inputs the altitude or whether, whether he leaves that blank or if it automatically populates from the phone, then then great. Yeah, so the phone's going to give us to us. Now, we have to assume also that, hey, their phone ran out of batteries or whatever, yeah. so they may have to come back, you know, jot it down on paper and then come back and fill this information in at that point and maybe a little more selective about what they fill in. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have two places here to actually take a picture. Uh, so our, our uh, so we'll have a picture here, a picture here. That would be you mentioned before. This might be a picture of of it, um, close up picture, and then one of it installed. So when I'm coming back out here in two months, I can find this darn thing. Is that kind of what we're thinking? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So one is a one's a close up. Is that right? Yeah, or a uh, picture in detail. Detail. Okay. And this would be more of the the zoomed out kind of the install. Yeah. General. General. Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. And then we'd have a list of like interview questions. Uh, you mentioned like the walk by, yeah, those kind of things. Um, if I walk by the camera, does it turn on? Does it actually take a picture of me? Uh, yeah. There's probably a half a dozen questions like that that we we'll have to answer also. Yeah, has the yeah has the installer conducted a walk by test? Gotcha. Um, okay. Which will be part of you know his training when he receives his kind of hour-long training on how to install the cameras, you know, he can go out there and use this app as a, uh, to, to help guide him to make sure that he hasn't missed anything off. Gotcha. So. Well, the good thing is on, on that screen, we'll be able to uh, go through and we can use this for the inspection also to say, hey, when's the next inspection of this and do those kind of things right inside this screen. This feels like a roughly complete, complete version of what you want, right? Is, that, is there anything else we're missing here? Obviously, there's a lot of questions we'll be asking in yeah. this, uh, maybe a dozen, maybe half a dozen questions we'll put in this area right here. Uh, and then when I come to do an inspection on that, maybe everything's pre-filled out. And then if I want to change like the SD card in this drop-down box, I would just you know select the new SD card out. That I, I was on 128 gig, now I'm on the 512, and those kind of questions we can do. Uh, cool. So the next question always comes in is, is where am I going to store this data? So are, those are the three screens, though, I think, right, from a rough 
rough sketch perspective? Yeah. Okay. So the, the next question we always ask when we're building applications is where am I going to store this stuff? And there's a number of places you can store your data at all. So now in Kev's case, he is a nonprofit, so he gets a copy of Office 365 already included. Now, with his Office 365 license, he also gets a copy of Power Apps for Office 365. So that's why in Kev's case, and in Forgotten Park's case, they're leaning more towards SharePoint as storing the data. For you, if you're looking at an enterprise application, you might look more towards SQL Server or something like that instead. Now, Kev's choosing SharePoint because it is already included with that free Office 365 plan that they get for that, that Microsoft is kind enough to give the charities. So with that, we can store this uh, medium, a small amount of data that we're doing right now. It's not a, not a huge amount of data. We'll store this in SharePoint, and it gives us a lot of nice extra benefits by doing that. Things like the, the, the attaching the photos, all that kind of comes over as free riders with that also. So our next video is all going to be about how do we actually create those SharePoint lists to store this information in, and then we're going to jump into actually building the application next. Uh, I won't make Kevin watch me doing all that, all those pieces here. But in this case, we'll go over to Kevin's SharePoint environment, and we'll start to build a, a new site. Uh, and as you're seeing, this is a brand new spanking environment. So a few of the preparatory questions we're going to ask is where are we going to build this application? Again, as you can see, this is Kevin's uh, uh, environment with no apps, no SharePoint list, brand new greenfield environment. So ideally, in a brand new environment, we might go through, hit this little gear icon right here, and create a special dev environment, and we promote from dev to prod. But since he's, this is the only application, brand new greenfield, we might decide to go ahead and see how this works, and then go and promote backwards from prod to dev and kind of build that way. There's a hundred ways you can do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it the, the, the easy way for the time being, because this is a brand new greenfield. So we're choosing SharePoint mainly because of the licensing types. And you can find out what license type you have by hitting the gearbox, going to plans, and we'll see that Kevin, in Kevin's case, he has Power Apps for Office 365. So that means he gets free uh, the connectors for, um, you can do Canvas applications, which we're going to build here, as well as a, 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 um, against free data sources, against the freemium data sources. Now you'll see when you go over to, um, if I go over to data here, and we go to connectors, connection, excuse me, and we hit new connection. We can see here what is what is a free connection and what is not. And as we're seeing here, Salesforce.com, for example, Dynamics, uh, SQL Server are all premium connectors, which mean uh, it would cost Kevin a licensing fee on top of what he may already be paying to connect to that. Now, if I go down to SharePoint, though, which is way down here, we can, of course, do a search for it, but I'll just do a lazy man search here. There we go. As you can see, SharePoint is a standard connection, and it's basically going to be included for free. So a few decisions he can make. If he decided to put this in Excel, for example, he might get things like sharing violations, where multiple people are trying to communicate with the same Excel spreadsheet. That might cause a problem for people in the field, and they give up on the application. Uh, SharePoint will get us past that problem. Uh, now, SQL Server would be a better answer if you have large amounts of data, but in Kevin's case, uh, he'll have hundreds of cameras maybe at full deployment, not a huge, not a huge amount of things, uh, a few photos, so it's well in the realm of a SharePoint application. You can store lots of data in SharePoint, but SQL Server gives you a lot more knobs to turn from a performance perspective. So that's some of the decision making we're, we're, we're kind of we're leaning that direction. Uh, well, Kevin, thanks for kind of starting us off here uh, and kind of building these requirements now. So now we think we're ready to kind of build this data source in our next video. So thanks so much. And uh, okay. thanks for joining us today, guys. Go check out ForgottenParks.org, which is, which is uh, Kevin, uh, uh, his, his company, and is, is a nonprofit charity, and nonprofit organization, excuse me. And there's tons more on that website and how you can help as well. They are trying to uh, kind of rehabilitate this park from, from from decades of, of being ravaged, basically. Yeah. Uh, so this is a great organization. We're hoping to build this, this uh, inventory app to help them and have you guys watch us build it. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot.